Hi everybody, Mike from the Digital Media Lab. We're going to be talking about sharpening inside of Camera Raw and just in general. Let's get started. Oh, incidentally, you will find a folder inside of the lab materials, inside of public volume, lab materials, DIGM 2350. This is lab 13, or folder labeled lab 13. That's where the files are located. Uh, link in the description. Let's get started. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about sharpening. Does anybody in here actually, does anybody know what is sharpening exactly? Make it look better, yeah. It makes it look sharper, I guess. The edges, like it clears, it cleans up a lot of like blurriness. Blurriness. Um, inside of, oh, where's my layers palette? Oh, it's over here, okay. So you guys, let me uh, kind of change this file ground. Okay, so essentially I just have uh, gradients going back and forth here and it's uh, kind of drawing a line of varying contrast. And let's go ahead and press Command J to duplicate that layer. And we'll label, we'll go ahead and label this layer Unsharp Mask. Because we're gonna be looking at a couple of different kinds of sharpening. And then you guys need to go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. So with that unsharp mask layer selected, go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And there it is on the screen, filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. If you're having trouble with that, raise your hand, let me know, finding that. Second to find that. You can go ahead and press Command Plus a few times to zoom in. We'll kind of need to zoom in on that line in the in the center. Uh, press Command J to duplicate that layer and then work off that layer. So we're actually going to sharpen it a couple of different ways, and we'll do each version on a different layer. Go ahead and crank Umsharp Mask to 500%, and we'll start to see what sharpening is. You can kind of look along this line. I'm just kind of scrolling left and right along the contrast of this line. Somewhere roughly in the center, you will really start to see what sharpening is. And you can kind of check and uncheck preview to see before and after. Sharpening is a trick of the eye. It's a trick to make you make an image appear sharper. What it is, is it will look at, it will try to find lines in your image and it will increase the contrast in the pixels around those lines. So sharpening is something that we do to images, but <clears throat> one thing to kind of note, if we had an image with quite a bit of camera shake, is sharpening going to fix that? No, not really. Camera shake cannot, or blurriness in your image for whatever reason, cannot be fixed in Photoshop. There might be a way, but it's really complicated and it doesn't work very well. Um, there might have been, I, I noticed that there was a new filter in CC 2014, the latest release of Photoshop, which just came out a week or two ago. Um, there's a new filter in there that looks like it might do something, but it never, these kinds of things never seem to work very well. So camera shake, motion blur, there's never really a good way to fix these things. Okay, so let's look at the settings inside of Unsharp Mask here and get through some of the theory and then we'll go into some practice. Amount is kind of what you think it is. As you increase the amount, it's basically going to sharpen more. 
If you crank it up to 500%, you're probably going to notice a lot of these little anomalies coming up. Go ahead and like bring it down to like 50% and take a look at it and then bring it back up to 500% if you really if you have trouble seeing these kind of random pixels going on in here. One of the problem with sharpening is that when you sharpen edges, you also sharpen noise. You also sharpen noise. And even an image like this, which I generated in Photoshop, has noise. So every image ever will have at least a little bit of noise. You can't get away from it. And whenever you sharpen, you end up sharpening noise. There are some tricks around that. One of those tricks inside of the unsharp mask way of sharpening is threshold. And as we increase our threshold, notice that to somewhere in about the 10 range, usually we want to keep the threshold kind of low. Notice that those pixels go away. What is threshold? Threshold is saying do not sharpen lines unless they have enough contrast. So that little bit of noise that we were sharpening wasn't really, it was just barely there. And we ended up sharpening and punching it out. But once we told Unsharp Mask that we don't want to sharpen those, that tiny little bit of contrast, it went away. And if we start to crank up threshold a lot higher, and let's say, uh, go ahead and let's zoom out just a little bit by pressing Command minus, and kind of uh, get your page on the center. And you'll notice that as you increase threshold, actually, why don't you go ahead and for now go ahead and crank your radius all the way up to, well, not all the way up, uh, let's give it a value of, I don't know, 10 or so, which we'll, we'll talk about radius in just a second. As I increase threshold, notice that it goes away from the center. That's because gray, because the center is essentially gray, right? We have two um, gradients going opposite one another. So as the gradients go towards the edges, our line is becoming more and more contrast, but then towards the center, less contrast, right? There's less of a line there. So as we increase threshold, notice that it kind of pushes that away. Usually uh, values, uh, you know, 10 to 15, these are kind of typical values for threshold. Go and leave your amount at 500% and let's talk about radius. Radius is simply how far away from the line are we going to sharpen, or how far, how much around. This is usually a value based on the type of image. For example, um, landscape, if we were to shoot buildings, like many of the images that I handed you uh, for the last lecture, the camera raw lecture, they work with a very low radius. They would probably work with a very low radius. Now at the same time, they're also very high, well, at least originally, they were very high res images. And we would also want to bump up the radius a little bit for that as well. Or maybe a little bit down, actually. See, high res images, you probably want a little bit less radius. Because there's more pixels. Uh, you'll see when we actually get to an image. Uh, fortunately, I don't, I don't know if I have a really high res image. Let's go ahead and set this, uh, go ahead and pick a value, a fairly high value, 150. Let's set a radius of maybe six pixels, threshold of uh, a low threshold, just to get rid of that noise. Three, I think, will work here just okay, fine. And we'll click OK. Go ahead and go to your Layers palette. Select the background layer and press Command-J to make a duplicate of that. And let's label this one Smart Sharpen. Yes. So select the background layer and press Command J. Control J on a PC. Is everybody at this point right now? You can look at me quizzically. Quizzically. Wait. Quiz. You can look at me with a degree of curiosity. <laughs> I watched John Adams last night. Now I'm like, I have to talk like an 1800s professor or something. I don't know. Is that, you know the HBO show, John Adams? 
So I'm like, doth thou sharpen? I don't know. <laughs> all right. So now with Smart Sharpen, let's go to Filter, Sharpen. All of these options are inside of, okay, in Smart Sharpen. So with the Smart Sharpen layer selected, make sure it's selected. If you're on uh, the background layer, it won't let you do this. So Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. Which brings up this dialog box. I would like to note that this dialog box got a significant upgrade in the latest version of Photoshop. We are working in Photoshop CS6, in Photoshop CC and CC 2014. This dialog box got a significant improvement. Let's talk about some of the options inside of here. We have a mount, pretty obvious, just like our unsharp mask. We have radius, just like our unsharp mask. We don't have a threshold in this one. But we do have the option to either remove Gaussian or lens blur. The only two that you should ever use is Gaussian and lens blur. Uh, motion blur is a trick to try and fix motion blur. It doesn't work. Uh, Gaussian blur is for if you're sharpening something that's not a photograph, use Gaussian blur. If you're sharpening a photograph, always use lens blur. In fact, by default, it goes to Gaussian blur. And in later versions of Photoshop, it defaults to lens blur, which it should. Because it's pretty rare that you actually need to sharpen something that's not a photograph. Sometimes you do, but eh, not really. So one of the things when using this filter is always select lens blur. Remove lens blur. The other thing that you will note is a, a checkbox for more accurate. Um, this is one of the things you should learn about Photoshop is that Photoshop will label things something. It'll call it, you know, in this case, more accurate, but it's not. It likes to label things with the word smart and more accurate. More accurate, all it is, is another pass of sharpening at, I think, 100% at one, rad one pixel radius. That's all more accurate is. It's another pass of sharpening. Generally, rule of thumb, don't bother with it. Let's go ahead and select a value fairly high, 500%, two pixels. That's fine. You can save these settings. Oops, went back to default. You can save these settings for later. There is an advanced option where you can sharpen highlight and shadows independently of one another. Generally, don't bother with that. It's not worth your time. And click OK. So that's smart sharpening. Um, let's press Command J to duplicate the, or select the background layer. Press Command J to duplicate that one. Let's cover our last and third method of sharpening. So duplicate the background layer again, and we'll call this high pass sharpening. So select the background layer, press Command J, and relabel that layer um, high pass, high pass sharpening. For this one, we need to go to filter other high pass. High pass is a little bit weird. High pass is a filter that creates um, a grayscale image. Actually, it's going to be a lot clearer what high pass is when we actually take a look at an image. So let's talk about what high pass is in a, in, in a second when we talk about images. But essentially, high pass will create kind of this weird uh, looking image. Uh, go ahead and set a, va a value of 10 and select OK. And let's go ahead and click the eyeballs for Smart Sharpen and Unsharp Mask because we don't want all three of those layers on together. Which shows us what High Pass has done to our layer, which looks really weird. But you notice it looks kind of similar to what we did with sharpening, but it's also kind of flattened out our image in a weird way. What we need to do is change our blend mode from normal to um, any of the contrast blend modes, which are the blend modes that are between overlay and hard mix. These are all of the contrast blend modes. 
most of the time you will use soft light for high pass. So blend modes is right here where it says normal. Let me, see. Oh, the mouse wheel is not, let me see. Yeah, inside of your layers palette, select high pass. You should have applied that filter to it. And you can generally use any of the contrast blend modes. However, soft light tends to be the most commonly used. I'm going to go ahead and hide and show that layer. And we can see that it's not all that dissimilar. We can compare it to Unsharp Mask. Unsharp Mask we hit with a fairly high amount value, so that's why it's going to look quite a bit different from Unsharp Mask. Go ahead and um, if you're uh, done examining those different kinds of sharpening and comparing them, uh, go ahead and close and save that. If you navigate to the Lab 13 folder, I've gone ahead and um, taken one of the images from Monday. Go ahead and double click that image and let's go through sharpening. Uh, Photoshop file is fine, yeah. So when you guys are done uh, with that image, go ahead and close it and save it. And double click the raw file, bringing us into ACR or Adobe Camera Raw. Sometimes Camera Raw is called ACR, by the way. Just abbreviated Adobe Camera Raw. Go ahead and click Auto, uh, which will just kind of give us some, some OK values for that. Not really too concerned with editing this image. The next thing I need to do is down here at the bottom left, I need to go ahead and select, it might say 27.6%. Go ahead and select 100%. So at the bottom here of Adobe Camera Raw, is everybody caught up with me? I'll wait just a second. So after you opened up the Raw, just hit done and have it open up in Photoshop? No, no, no. Uh, have it open in Camera Raw. We're going to sharpen in Camera Raw first. I'm going to show you guys about sharpening in Camera Raw. Yeah, and then select a, a zoom level of 100%. Uh, the zoom level is at the bottom left. The next thing that we need to do is go ahead and select the detail tab, which is located kind of towards the top left under our histogram. And we see that there are a bunch of default values, 25, 1, 25, and 0 masking. I'll hold down the space bar and I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the hand tool to kind of maneuver over to a kind of an important part of the image that I know is in focus. The birds apparently like the Sugar Land sign quite a bit. Incidentally, uh, what tool in Photoshop do you think I would use to fix bird poop? Spot healing. Probably spot healing. Yeah. I'd have a little bit of trouble at the edges around here because it would grab some of that blue sky as I drug around there, but I'd probably be able to get around it. Yeah. Okay, so sharpening inside of here gives us, now we see amount, radius, and detail. Uh, detail is very much like, uh, well, we'll see in a second. One of the things that you should note, okay, so... Inside of Adobe Camera Raw, I think I kind of forgot to mention this, but whenever you have a slider inside of Adobe Camera Raw, 
and you've got that slider selected and you're clicking it, you hold down the Alt key, it will change your view into something a little bit more convenient, um, depending on what that slider is. In the case of a mount, it creates a black and white, a temporary black and white image. So I'm just uh, holding and letting go of the Alt key. Because uh, one of the things that you guys should always strive to do is never sharpen color. We don't sharpen color, we sharpen luminance. I'll show you what we mean in a second when I open this image up in Photoshop. So I'll show you how to sharpen not the color. So we can select our amount value. Radius, again, we're very much used to it. Holding down the Alt key actually shows us kind of this view that lets us see radius like that. Detail will give us um, something very similar to that. It's kind of like the strength of the radius. It's sort of hard to explain detail. We have this fourth option masking. Now we talked about masking earlier. That's when you guys had that white box and you started painting in the white box. This will automatically create something called an edge mask. As I hold down the Alt key, I can actually see the mask. When masking white reveals, black conceals. So as I drag this masking slider up, you'll notice that I'm sharpening the important details and I'm not sharpening the noise. We can even see some of that noise as I drag my masking pretty low. We can see that there's a little bit of noise in this image. As I drag my slider up, it hides those areas that I don't really want to sharpen, you know, the, the red of the sign. I don't, there's no lines there, right? What are you guys laughing at? <laughs> yeah, it is kind of. Later on, I went ahead and draw, created an action that will do this for you inside of Photoshop. It's called edge masking, which creates a nice way. Uh, I don't know if you have you we covered much in actions yet. Actions are just uh, like little programs you can run inside of Photoshop that just do things for you. Um, I'll just show you guys how to do that right quick in a second if I have time at the end. The next thing to cover is noise reduction. Um, camera ACR does a really good job of noise reduction. Um, this image was shot at an ISO of 50, so it's going to have very, very low noise. Let me see if I can bring a little bit of that noise out. I wonder if I can. Yeah, there it is. So I'm going to exaggerate the noise with a bunch of sharpening, with overly high sharpening settings and a masking of zero, just to kind of bring that noise out. And as I increase my luminance, notice that it starts to bring, it starts to kind of cut out some of that noise. Now this image has very, very little noise in it. The reason, the only reason why any of it's kind of showing up, uh, luminance detail kind of brings back some of the detail that is lost. When you, when, you, when you reduce noise, essentially what you're doing is blurring the image. It's almost like the opposite of sharpening in order to fix noise. Which is why sharpening and noise reduction are always kind of paired together. ACR does a really good job of noise reduction. Luminous contrast, you're not going to need to worry about. Um, color noise in older cameras can be a problem. In the newer ones, it's not too big a detail. Um, since this is a newer camera, it's not going to have much color noise in it. Color noise is essentially just random pixels of color. It's usually fixed really, really easily by this slider if you do ever see any of it. Fortunately, I don't have a great example of that. Does anybody have any questions about sharpening inside of Camera Raw? Uh, because we don't, uh, because no, because the noise reduction of luminance is not the color reduction of, so there's two different kinds of noise. Unfortunately, this image doesn't have any color noise, so I can't show you. And frankly, it's not really like leaving the defaults here of 25 and, and uh, 650, you're, you're going to be fine uh, with that most of the time. It's, it's going to be a rare occurrence that you'll ever actually have to bump this up a little bit. Sometimes when you shoot really high ISOs, it can be a problem, but modern cameras do a really good job of eliminating it on their own. 
Um, a rule of thumb with sharpening. Let's go, I'm going to go ahead and double click these sliders. Remember, double clicking will reset them back to zero. When sharpening a landscape or let's say not a person, you want a high amount, a low radius value, a high detail, and a low masking. So high, low, high, low with not people. So this image being, uh, you know, not people, I would probably do uh, about 70 or so, keeping a fairly low radius value, maybe 0.7. I could probably keep that pretty low. And I might crank up my uh, mount a bit. Fairly high amount of detail will also work out pretty well. Probably crank that up pretty high because of my low radius. And then just a tiny bit of masking to help us not grab some of that noise. For the most part, since this is a fairly low noise image, I can really hit it with a lot of sharpening and not be too worried. Now, with people, pictures of people, where a person is the most important part of that image. You had four or five of those inside of that folder from Monday. Some of Dr. Waite being Dr. Waite. And with that, you do the exact opposite. You want a low amount, a high radius, a low detail, and a high masking. So low, high, low, high. Does anybody know why that is? Because you want the person to separate it from the background? Not so much. You want them to look more cleaner. Like, it, it reduces like, any kind of markings or anything like that. Yeah, you could imagine if we had a person's face. Well, and it, right? so just... If we had a person's face, like I think I do. Let me pick up one of those images. Let me grab this one of Harold real quick. And one thing to note, there is, a, is, there is an extremely important reason. When sharpening, you need to notice your zoom levels. Always sharpen at increments of 100%. So you need to be at 100, 200, 300, 400. These are increments that are OK to sharpen at. You can get away sometimes with sharpening at 50%. But it, if you want to, if you're going to really take a good look at this image, hello, Harold. Don't tell Harold I'm doing this to him, by the way. He won't let me photograph him anymore. Anyway, and I think if we zoom out, there's going to, yeah, there's even going to be a dialog box down here at the bottom. As soon as I start to zoom out from a zoom levels other than 100%, it's going to warn me. And this is true inside of Photoshop as well. Um, Photoshop's a little bit more flexible than ACR is, but. But notice that as okay, so we want a low amount of we want a low amount, a high radius, a low detail, actually probably yeah, very minimal, and then a high degree of masking. Notice that as I bring up this masking almost to a hundred, I'm not getting the texture or details of his face. We don't want to sharpen details of people's faces. It's not good. It does not make look people pretty. Unless you want them to look like they have skin problems. If you don't like that person, incidentally, always be kind to photographers because they can really screw with you how you look. Okay. So go ahead. I'm going to reopen that image that we were just working on. Go ahead and uh, set the sharpening values back to default by just double clicking each one in turn. And luminance, color detail. And let's take this image into Photoshop and sharpen it. Another important note about sharpening is that you should always consider sharpening for output. When sharpening for print, you need to hit it with a little bit more than normal because the print process will blur your image slightly. When sharpening for a computer screen or the web, don't over sharpen. Computer screens are, are naturally just 
a little bit sharper with images and pixels. They just work a little bit better in that medium, somewhat for obvious reasons and some other complicated things. So go ahead and select open image, by the way, so we can open that while we're talking. Yeah, so it should be open. If you select open image inside of Camera Raw, it will open that image inside of Photoshop. Is everybody caught up where I'm at? Okay. And just like before, we're going to duplicate that layer. Let's go ahead and try high pass sharpening. So I'll duplicate that layer, the background layer by pressing Command J. I'll double click layer one to rename it. Let's call this Smart Sharpen. I'm um, excuse me, high pass sharpening. High pass sharpen. Then we're going to go to filter other high pass on that duplicated layer. It didn't open in Photoshop?